Well, <coughs> let's take up um, the IT. Um, the government uh, has funded the fully serviced extended school, which perhaps helps with uh, this young man, if you live near to school, to be able to access school um, equipment in ICT, because under the fully serviced extended school, uh, the hope is that they would remain open at least until 8 p.m. in the evenings. But that wouldn't help people who are you know, 10 miles away from the school, for obvious reasons, unless they can be transported in and back. Um, I think the other factor, obviously, is that um, home facilities which are sadly would have to be paid for by yourself. I don't know how much broadband is. Does broadband exist now in this area? At the minute I'm bringing my laptop in yeah. for every ICT lesson, so that's five lessons a fortnight. And I'm also bringing it in for the after school sessions at the minute as I've got a deadline to meet. So th three nights, that's looking at £500 worth of equipment on yes. a public bus. So, um, for well, yeah, that's a bit of a risk that you've got to take, so I can do it there, and I can also take it home with me to complete it home. But then there's people who, if they don't have um, a laptop that they can bring into school and take back, then they're going to have to work up just solely on the school computers because it can't be accessed from yeah. home. Um, so they've got to stay after school, and if they can't do transport, then they're a bit um, stuck. Um, but obviously, in terms of whether or not this authority can provide laptops for individual students, I don't think we have that sort of funding unless the government is going to give us help with that. Can I suggest that you look into giving people's access to a school system or a school system that can be accessible by pupils, just like any other, like we mm. access the council website from home, that type of facility that mm. people wouldn't have to keep yeah. um, looking up. I mean, they could probably have their own documents, I don't know, the ICT specialists are over there, but could, I think it will be worth looking at. What we would like to do is to allow pupils access to our network and then under what is known as a, a virtual desktop and infrastructure is then the school's curriculum um, applications would sit on a server within the council and then you would be able to access that remotely. Of course at the moment the school applications sit within servers within the school so if you wanted to access them you've actually got to go and into a network around it and back into the school is quite complicated so we can simplify that and by taking that approach as well that would obviously um, allow the school to potentially have more access to computers as well because a virtual desktop means that you don't have to have an, an expensive desktop in the school so it, it solves two problems. Anything supplementary on that for anybody or should we move on? Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, gentlemen, certainly. If you would introduce yourself, sir. And then... uh, my name is Boynes, um, Tarpley Parish Council. Uh, what the young gentleman here has been saying is, is so relevant to Tarpley as well. Um, we're setting up, a, we've been desperately trying to set up a, a, a decent youth club in Tarpley. And we're moving towards it now. And one of the questions we get asked is, how can these young people get transport to Winsford to the new lifestyle centre there, which has got its 25 metre swimming pool and that sort of thing? So parents can take them, you know, but this is not what the, the youngsters want. <coughs> the youngsters really want to be able to get to these facilities themselves. <coughs> and it's not only the young people, because they have the older people's um, swimming sessions there, uh, and gym and, and, and that, with GP support, uh, and we want to be able to get those people there. And there is no transport between Tarpley and the adjacent villages. I'm not talking about just purely about Tarpley here but places like Tiverton, uh, Eaton and that sort of thing, to Winsford. And uh, whereas you know, we've got a nice half-hourly bus service to Chester and Nantwich, that's not really convenient for this particular thing. So, uh, councillors, please bear in mind that, and actually I've been talking to Mr. Neil Robertson, Robertson, the, the transport, about transport for this. And I feel sure, there, there I said it, I feel sure that parish councils would be prepared to contribute if something like this could be, uh, services like this could be arranged. At least they could be asked. And is that because it's not only Tarpley young people, it's all the other young people around. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Carl Duff, who's the manager of Vale Royal Women's Aid and a member of the Voluntary Community and Faith Sector Hub. Now, and just behind the camera there, so uh, question 17, please. My question is, how soon will decisions be made about continued funding for voluntary organisations 
who currently deliver vital services to children and young people in West Cheshire. And if I can give just a bit of background um, to this, we've got, as you're aware, a number of voluntary organisations delivering services to extremely vulnerable children and young people, including those with mental health needs, children who are disabled, um, and children who I work with who have been exposed to uh, domestic abuse. Um, we know that the service we're delivering reduces the workload of our colleagues within the statutory sector, um, and we'd like to continue offering these services. Um, but, um, as you're probably aware, we need to know as soon as possible um, whether or not um, that funding will continue, preferably by the end of September, so that if it doesn't continue, we'll have a good six months to look for external funding um, from other um, organisations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in, in October, what we did do was write to all the organisations that we are aware of who, who receive some form of grant funding that they will keep their grant funding for 12 months. Uh, that enables us to look at the amount of money that we are investing in these organisations. From memory now, it's about £15 million, I think, we invest in a whole range of voluntary and other organisations. Uh, some organisations receive four grants, one from each of the old legacy councils, and so you can see there's quite a lot of duplication. And the existing the legacy councils also did not implement the commissioning process that they're actually obliged to have done so about two years ago. So what we have now is a situation where if we're going to review this, we might as well review it and ensure that we then start the commissioning process off. Now, in a commissioning process, clearly we need to understand what we are trying to achieve as a council, and then we will be commissioning other organisations to deliver what we need to deliver as a council, so it achieves all our objectives, and that ensures that we get best value for money and achieving our objectives. Now, in that sort of process, I understand there'll be quite a lot of casualties and problems, because some organisations might not be able to respond, or there is duplication between what they're delivering and what other organisations are delivering. So what we are doing is, is working with the third sector, as it's called, which is a range of voluntary organisations, and supporting the development of the third sector assembly, as it's called. And we have an officer in there that's going to help and work and pull that organisation together to ensure that all the small groups that provide these services actually start to learn to work to, with each other for their mutual benefit. And it's so important because all these little groups, whether it's small groups or big groups, people are involved because of personal experiences, uh, tragedies and so on and they're clearly committed and passionate about what they do for the vulnerable people in our society and communities and therefore what we want to do in this process is make sure we don't lose that but it's to encourage it and grow it and develop it so that more people can actually uh, benefit from that type of uh, care and support that is clearly so needed in, in, with some people. Now it's a big tall agenda to do all that by September I have to say, and it might be we get to a point of September where we can see that we're not going to achieve that, that we might just continue it for another 12 months in terms of the existing grant levels. And that's a decision we will make, I guess, in August or September, because the last thing we want to do is, is cause any disruption to the services that are delivered in our communities. And that's a decision we'll make in about September. We'll write to our organisers and say, this is where we are, this is what we're doing, and this is the timetable. But that's probably as I see it at the moment. And if you are any problems, if you've not heard by uh, beginning of October, I do strongly recommend you write to either myself or the Chief Executive and just to make sure we haven't forgotten you individually or forgotten a lot of others as well. Okay?